By most people's reckoning, we did not take action on climate change early enough to be able to keep the planet below 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. And indeed, as things currently stand, we will sail past the 2.0 degrees line as well. So people have been talking more and more about different ways that humanity might reduce some of the effects, at least in the relatively short term, to buy time, if nothing else. We've talked before about proposals from some people to pump sulfates or other material into the stratosphere to shield the Earth from a percentage of the incoming sun's insulation, a highly controversial field known as geoengineering. People have their doubts because it's the sort of thing that if you do it and you get it wrong, well, you're stuck with the consequences for probably a couple of years at least. Well, now a different proposal is coming into view. Last year, Istvan Shabuti, a astronomer at the University of Hawaii, published a paper that suggested tethering a huge solar shield to a repurposed asteroid to sit at a point between the Earth and the Sun and thereby deflect a portion of the Sun's rays. That point would be around 932,000 miles away, which is called the Lagrange point, the point where the gravitational pulls from the Earth and the Sun cancel each other out. Seems like a wacky idea. But then I suppose that's exactly what people have said about innovations over the last couple of centuries that have become commonplace today. So we should look more carefully, I suppose. In any case, researchers in Israel have announced that they are ready to build a prototype of this proposed barrier to demonstrate that it will work. OK, but the more you look at the details but more it still seems to be something of a wacky idea. To block the right amount of solar radiation to keep the planet within current temperature bounds would take a parasol or shade measuring one million square miles across. That's what I said, one million square miles. For reference, that's around one quarter the size of the entire United States a little under the size of Argentina and exactly the size of Kazakhstan. I don't mean to labour the point, but we're talking big. According to the physics professor leading the prototype work, Dr Joram Rosen, such a shade would weigh at least 2.5 million tonnes. How big a rocket, you might ask, would Elon Musk have to launch to get that into space? Spoiler considerable about bigger than he's got or is ever likely to ever have. So the theory goes that it becomes more practical to send up a bunch of smaller shades, which wouldn't completely block the sun's light, but would cast slightly diffused shade on the Earth. Dappled, you might say. The researchers say their prototype would be 100 square feet, which seems a bit more doable than a million square miles, they are looking for a cool 10 to 20 million dollars to fund it. 99% of its weight would come from the asteroid it would be hitched to. Not sure which asteroid they had in mind that's conveniently standing by. And he said this, we can show the world, look, there is a working solution. Take it, increase it to the necessary size. Sounds easy, right? Increase it to the necessary size until you reflect on how much heavy lifting, literally, that sentence is doing. By the way, this would not be instead of stopping burning fossil fuels, it would be as well as, purely to help the climate stabilise in terms of average global warming while mitigation can continue at a pace that is practically possible. The proponents of this approach say that it has one big advantage. You get to turn the brightness knob down on the sun, but you do so without actually messing with the atmosphere. Which is a good point, but there are other good points that don't play so nicely with the plan. As should be completely obvious, if a single prototype involves up to $20 million, the actual finished thing would be ridiculously expensive. We are talking 
trillions of dollars. That's trillion with a T. You know, as in a trillion here, a trillion there. Soon you're talking serious money. Bear in mind all the money that will already need to be spent as well adapting human habitations to cope with the impacts of climate change and to seek to go through the energy transition that, whether you like it or not, is well underway in many parts of the world, or is at least well underway in terms of starting up. That's not a problem, says Dr Shapoudi. The cost would still be less than what the world currently spends on military weapons. He said this, saving the earth and giving up 10% of your weapons to destroy things is actually a pretty good deal in my book. Sounds easy when you put it like that. Tell you what, get Vladimir Putin to sign up first. Then you might get some of the others to follow. Probably going to have to be in that order though, so good luck with that. Secondly, to get from a standing start, in other words, where we are today, to full deployment would take a long time. So would it even be in time for the impact it's supposed to have? Thirdly, a big canopy of that size is going to be very vulnerable to damage from solar storms or fast-moving space debris. Other than all of those things, obviously it's a brilliant idea. The Planetary Sunshade Foundation, yes, that exists, says that one reason the concept hasn't gotten more traction is because climate researchers have been focused on the Earth's climate rather than space, which is kind of in their job description, I imagine. It suggests that if we could start using raw materials sourced from space and maybe also start launching the ships carrying parasols from the Moon rather from the Earth, then it would all cost a lot less. But probably not going to happen any time in the next decade or two, is it? Since we don't have any infrastructure on the moon, have never launched a mission from there, have no way to identify or exploit resources from space. And, you know, the clock's ticking. All of which rather suggests that if we end up giving in, and I'm not arguing for it, just noting likely reality, if we end up giving in to this idea that we need to do something short term to shield from the sun to buy time, it's not going to look like that. It would cost almost infinitely less money to inject calcium carbonate into the stratosphere, which could be done with existing technology. Indeed, if some rogue nation state or maverick billionaire, mentioning no names, gets it into their head just to do it, it might be difficult to stop them before it's too late. A whole bunch of people live by the mantra, ask for forgiveness, not for permission. Yes, messing with the atmosphere is risky, especially if it's done by rogue states or maverick billionaires in a hurry. But honestly, if you're going to make me bet between that version and the world spending trillions on parasols the size of Argentina version, well, I'm going to go for the extremely low-cost, slightly stupid version as the most likely to actually make an appearance. What would probably be better would be simply to hold our nerve, keep going with the innovation and implementation that we're doing at the moment, the scale of which will build over time, but is already bigger than most people believe it to be. Getting Western societies to hold their nerve on pretty much anything these days is a big ask, to be fair. So, as always, expect some lively times still to come. <laughs>